All right, let's take a look at your buttons. This button here sets this clock over here to zero. When I flick it, as you can see, it's gone to, to zero. And what will happen is this little timer will start counting up and the bottom one will start counting down and it will make a beep, beep, beep noise. When you're running both battery packs, which I'll explain just now to you, that's a good thing to watch. Because when you get to about the nine minute mark, um, it'll, this thing will start beeping to let you know you're at, at about nine minutes. And then at about 12 minutes, it'll, it'll like beep a lot more. Don't worry too much about this beeping. That's not going to do anything to the hexa. If you don't listen to it, it'll just continue counting. The flat time is, 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 the, is, the top, is the top one. So that's this button here. Sets that flat time to zero. If, you, if I raise this up, you'll see it starts counting up and starts counting down. If I raise it down, it stops. If I click this button, back to zero. All right. The next button that's important is this here. All the way down is manual mode. In the middle is attitude mode, and that's the mode that you're going to fly in 99% of the time. And then there's GPS hold mode for a few options, and I'll explain that shortly. This button here doesn't do anything. Don't worry about it. This button here is the return to home command. In other words, let's say there's a day you're busy flying out, you're in attitude mode, and you lose orientation, or you can't see the quad anymore, or you, something really bad has happened. And hopefully you've got enough flight time still left. What you will do is you'll flick this up into GPS mode. And you'll flick this down. And then you don't touch it. And like the demo in the video, it'll raise itself up to 20 meters. Hopefully there's nothing in the way. It'll fly back and it'll land. If at any time you feel something's gone wrong or you want to override that, what you would need to do is you'd need to put that off and put that back into attitude mode. And then control it manually. Okay, next button that's important is your orientation control button. Here we have two modes. One is home lock and one is called course lock. I'll explain that to you in another video. I might even give you a link to explain that differently. Basically what will happen is, again, if you're flying out somewhere and you don't know which is backwards, which is front, which is sideways, flick into GPS mode put it into home lock and then this here when you draw back to you will draw back to the to the point of takeoff and hence orientation or home lock but i'll explain the difference between home lock and course lock to you just now but that's a good one to use but it's not going to land itself you'll need to still do that when you want to land and you close by put into attitude mode and manually land it and you can put that off as well once it's closed by the next button, when you want to take photographs, you put that up for one shot, put it down, probably give it about five seconds. In other words, one, two, three, four, five, it's taken one shot. If you leave it up, I've set the, 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 the camera or the strata snapper um, command unit to take a photograph every four to five seconds. That's how I have it on mine, and I find that that's how I get the best shots. Because um, even though I can see through the screen that I'm going to be putting over here for you, and I'll show you that in another video, even though I can see what the camera is looking at, sometimes due to wind or movement on the stick or just the quads moving too fast, left or right, um, a, a shot is blurred. But every time, if you leave it on, I normally leave this on from the minute I take off until the minute I land, I leave that on and I get myself about 100 photographs for every 5 minutes of flight and about 200 photographs for every 10 minutes of flight. Stop. Okay. The last button is this one here, which sets your camera angle, what they call the pitch. In other words, when you go left, the camera will be pointing more towards the horizon. When you go right, it'll be pointing more towards the ground. And we don't quite have 100% 90 degree. You probably get closer to a 45 to 60 degree. I will try and set it for you so it goes as much to 90 as you can. But I hardly have ever used that in any of my aerial photography. In the middle, it'll make a noise. And you'll know when it does it, it'll be, but you always practically level and that's really it uh, Scott all these other buttons are used to program the unit I've already done that for you and you don't need to do any of that okay the last two buttons that don't do anything is this button here and this button here there simply isn't a channel for it and there's no need for it uh, maybe at some point you can set it up to launch missiles or something but for now those two buttons are irrelevant thank you